Hello, my dear gardening friends. Rosa rugosa would be a rose about which we will be talking in this video. The carefree beauty growing on beaches here in Northeast USA. Now, thanks to hybridizing efforts, this rose is appearing more often in our gardens as well. And the tendency of gardeners is to treat this rose as another uh, shrub modern rose in the gardens and take care of it as well in the same way, which is a colossal mistake as one of the viewers of uh, this channel told me. So we are talking about the tricks of taking care of the Rosa Rugosa uh, in this video today. Let's, first, let's talk about the history of this rose. Uh, you would think that this rose is living in the United States for many centuries because it's species rose. Well, it's, uh, this rose is not here in the United States for a long time. It made its way in 1845. It was first introduced to northern U.S. and uh, northern eastern coast. And uh, since that time it started spreading rapidly, it escaped cultivation, uh, colonized beautiful beach and beaches of the northern eastern coasts, and now it's um, growing carefree, beautiful, uh, not only in the gardens, but in the wild, on the beaches here. We are situated 10 minutes from the beach. Uh, we are facing the Atlantic Ocean here. And uh, when you go to the beach, you will see plenty of Rosa Rugosas growing. They are on the beach, they're very short, the plants are short. They're very well adapted to grow on sandy beaches, facing the salty uh, um, winds. And uh, they produce beautiful hips in the fall and they thrive there. So you can say that for a short period of time, Rosa Rugosa escaped cultivation, uh, became uh, very well established in natural landscape and now it is considered in some part of uh, US it considered invasive thanks to its suckering habit and thanks to its ability to create thick uh, hedges and spread quite rapidly and grow very quickly. But there are beautiful qualities of Rosa Rugosa. So we are going to focus first on pros of this beautiful shrub and cons and why I took Rosa Rugosa from my garden. So the beautiful qualities of Rosa Rugosa, which makes them worth growing in our gardens, would be Rosa Rugosas do have wonderful scent. They usually have five petal flowers, but now, thanks to hybridizing efforts, flowers can be more full with more petals. They have beautiful scent, and when you collect those petals uh, and make um, um, whatever you want to make in the, in the house, store them, dry them, they still uh, preserve that beautiful rose scent. Uh, my history with Rosa Rugosa is that um, in my childhood, me and my mom used to go to the fields where wild roses were growing carefree and we would collect all the hips and we'll make tea from it. My mom always treated those drinks as rich in vitamins, especially vitamin C. And I remember drinking teas from Rosa Rugosa hips. And it is true, those hips are edible. A lot of birds do love them. They are very um, colorful, deep reds, and they're very plentiful. And uh, you would consider that Rosa Rugosa is a three, I would say even four season plant, thanks to its beautiful foliage. Some people grow Rosa Rugosas in their gardens for just that beautiful lush, apple foliage, like green uh, Granny Smith apples. They're always nice and cheerful uh, year long. So through the season, the foliage tend to become darker and darker. But Rosa Rugosas are always staying with this freshest color green. Another beautiful feature of these wonderful plants is that they are extremely disease resistant. They can take care of themselves and they don't need any pesticides, they don't need any fertilizers. They can get adapt, they can get well adapted to um, very sandy soil. Of course, they love deep, beautiful, rich soils, but they can grow on, as you can see, on the dunes on our beaches, no problem. No fertilization, no problem. Although they would love if you give them natural fertilizer, they will flourish on it. No watering, no problems. They can bounce back very quickly and they can flower very well after a drought period. So they bounce back quickly after um, a period of drought. 
So these uh, features make Rosa Rugosa a very beautiful addition to our gardens. They flower all season long. Uh, sometimes you can see hips and flowers on the same bush. They attract birds thanks to its beautiful hips and uh, generally a carefree uh, plant in the garden is very valuable. Uh, one more positive thing about Rosa Rugosa is it is very hardy to zone two. From two to seven, Rosa Rugosa doesn't like really warm climates. So it uh, colonized the northern part of US and now it can be found also in the uh, western coast of US. So the negative things about Rosa Rugosa are they sucker a lot. They spread a lot and in some parts of US they considered invasive because of that. So in my garden I was growing Rosa Rugosa in the front of my house and uh, it was a big uh, shrub. Rosa Rugosas uh, are fairly big. They can reach five, even six feet uh, wide and high. So they do need space in your garden. But thanks to cultivation, now we have much shorter and more compact varieties. So if you don't, uh, you don't need, you don't want to allow that space for Rosa Rugosa to grow, and especially for smaller gardens, of course, five by five is a big space to occupy. Uh, go for smaller varieties. Another thing about Rosa Rugosas, they really don't want you whack them down and cut them and try to fit them into that space. They dislike it. And a lot of people think that other roses in our garden, our modern shrub roses, climbers, well, climbers are a different story. Let's say shrub roses, hybrid teas roses, they don't mind severe pruning on a regular basis. Well, Rosa Rugosa doesn't like pruning. If you want a rose to be occupying smaller space, go for a smaller variety. But if you decide to introduce Rosa Rugosa in your garden, give that rose a space and let her flourish. Because the beauty of the bush with the trimming, regular trimming will be diminished and rose wouldn't have that carefree, beautiful, um, proportional shape. We planted Rosa Rugosa at the beginning when we just moved into this garden and I tried to fit Rose into that space. Well, I visually can see that Rose was not growing well. It had um, strange shoots growing in each direction, was not flowering well. Another thing, if you keep uh, cutting Rose, uh, especially in the fall, because you're afraid that Rosa Rugosa is not going to survive the winter well, keep in mind Rosa Rugosa is very cane hardy all the way to zone two and no reason to give it severe haircut in the fall as we do with, all, with some of, other, uh, of our roses in the garden because Rosa Rugosa doesn't need it. If you need to trim it, which I would encourage you not to do it, if you see a dead cane, trim it all the way down, but leave all the other canes growing and being free of um, cuts and uh, uh, trying to fit the rose into that space. So these are two things which gardeners might find uh, negative about Rosa Rugosas. They do sucker, they don't like a knife, and um, they can live without any uh, fertilizers. If you decide to fertilize them, they are okay, but if you don't want to fertilize them, they are okay too. Roses or goses will, will tolerate shade, some shade, but they will flower best in the sun. They love sun and uh, they, the flowering of Rosa or goses can be very beautiful and very full of wonderful scent. As for pesticides, Rosa Rugosa is famous to be remarkably disease resistant. Nothing can touch that rose. I remember when it was growing in my garden, that rose, uh, that rose was tenaciously disease-free, having this beautiful apple, uh, green apple, cheerful uh, color all year lo long. If gardeners treat all the roses, you know, once every two weeks, gardeners, some gardeners go and spray all their roses, which I don't do. I don't do um, uh, artificial uh, pesticides in my garden. I try to do natural stuff. And they do Rosa Rugosa too, because it's growing together with all other roses, so let me spray all this row of roses and be done with it. Well, Rosa Rugosa can be damaged by severe pesticides, 
and all other artificial stuff we put on our plants. So be very careful with her. Rosa Rugosa doesn't need our attention. She doesn't need our love because it can be killed by our love. It goes so well in the wild and it takes care of itself perfectly fine in the wild. And uh, we have a feeling that we have to take care of the garden, so we have to take care of this rose too. And we look at our roses and think that the same we should, the same approach we should have to Rosa Rugosa. No, leave that plant alone, give that rose space. If you want, throw several uh, hands full of fertilizer and let that grow, rose flourish and bloom and create hips for you or birds to enjoy. And the last thing I wanted to talk, where can we use Rosa Rugosa in our gardens? Well, if we do need to create a hedge for intruders not to come into our garden, Rosa Rugosa is an excellent candidate. It is very thorny and uh, there are plenty of thorns. I remember trying to collect all the hips and how thorny those roses were when I was walking with my mom among the fields in Ukraine collecting rose hips. So Rosa Rugosa is very thorny, there is no way around it, but that uh, feature makes it almost an um, unpenetrable barrier for intruders. Also Rosa Rugosa can be a great uh, soil stabilizer. If you have um, a running soil somewhere on the bank, plant Rosa Rugosa, which can be planted in masses, and it stabilizes the soil, uh, it doesn't let soil move, that's another good feature of Rosa Rugosa. Also, Rosa Rugosa can be planted uh, as um, uh, wind breakers. Of course, these plants don't go very high, uh, up to five feet, but if you need a low wind breaker, you can plant Rosa Rugosa. So the main maintenance of Rosa Rugosa in our garden would be to control suckers and um, to make sure you give Rose plenty of space to open its beautiful uh, leaves and flourish without any cuts and any reduction in size. As for suckers, the tendency is that if Rose creates a sucker, let that sucker go and create another bush. Well, if we let the sucker take all the energy from the original plant, the sucker will start flourishing and it might take over the plant. So the good idea is to cut the sucker off replant it if you want another Rosa Rugosa somewhere else in your garden or you want to give it away to a friend uh, and uh, not let that uh, sucker develop because the tendency is that the main bush can go down in vigor and strength and eventually can even die. So you cut away all the suckers to the ground usually is the way to do it but if you want to go all the way the proper way how it should be done you dig it all the way where sucker joins uh, the main plant and you tear it off. You don't cut it, you tear it off and uh, take that sucker away. Keep in mind that there are a lot of suckers. Rosa Rugosa loves to create a lot of babies and it's very thorny. So if you try to give it a trim, it's almost impossible job to do without very long gloves. So hopefully this video was helpful. Please do subscribe and I will see you next time. Happy gardening!